invite all of our children to come down front. And the parents of children can sit on the front seat. Am I on? Very good. <clears throat> all our children down front. I'd like to introduce you to two of our friends, Mr. and Mrs. Christensen, better known as Uncle Zach and Mama. Can you say good morning, Mama? Good morning, Mama. Well, they got the sweetest little thing in the neighborhood and give them some hello to me, and that just makes my heart warm. And now, I'm trying to say hello to Uncle Zach. Can you say good morning, Uncle Zach? <laughs> Well, I sure do appreciate each one of you all today. And all of you, we have a real quick story because we've got a whole program on the schedule today. Let me get the truth. Well, <clears throat> I used to have a team of mules. Yeah, he had a lot of mules. And uh, one of our mules uh, I just got too old and couldn't pull the wagon anymore. Just couldn't go no more. Got no old. And, and so finally, one, one day, uh, I went out and I had him on the back 40, way out on the back, and he was retired. And he was just eating grass and, and enjoying himself out there. And then you wouldn't look for him one day and you didn't see him, did you? No, I, I didn't see him at all. I looked for him, and, and I looked for him. There was an old mine shaft out there, a big hole in the ground. And I went out there looking. <laughs> Don't let me tell you. Mom, you was down in the hole. And it was deep, and it was narrow, and he was looking up at me going, <laughs> <laughs> and You see, that was his favorite meal, too, and I know, I know he was all hot behind that. And I told you, you remember what I told you? Yeah, I remember what you told But I was wrong when I told you, because I told you you'd never get that meal out of there. <laughs> Ain't no way, folks. So? I thought of her, and then we prayed. Yeah, we did do that. We prayed. <laughs> and, and then I, I remember you had an idea. That's right. I went and got the wagon, and I loaded it up full of dirt. And I rode back over there where the mule was, and I started throwing dirt on top of the mule. That was his favorite mule. The mule was in the hole. And his way to get him out was to throw dirt on top of him. Man, said she lie. I've never seen nothing like that before. Well, as I was doing the throw of dirt on top of the mule, she would just shake it off, stomp it down, and step on up. And I would throw more dirt on the mule, and she would just shake it off, stomp it down, and keep looking up. <laughs> and I would shake, throw more dirt on the hole, and he would just shake it off. I was going to say that. Go ahead, though. <laughs> shake it off, stomp it down and keep looking up. And finally, the dirt got lower and the mule got higher. And the mule just walked on out of that hole. You know, I said there was no way that you could do that. No way. But then you told me God will make a way. And I remember that all the time. So I know how we do that now. All you do is shake it off, shake it off with prayer, stomp it down and stand on the word of God. And keep looking up. Amen. You know, I wonder if they can say that. You youngins, can you say that? Shake it off. Shake it off. Stomp it down. Stomp and keep looking up. And keep looking up. I think they got it. I think they got it. Let's pray. God, we ask you to bless the boys and girls. And may they know no matter what hole they get in into life or circumstances, if they shake it off with prayer, stomp it down and stand on the word of God, and keep looking up in faith, you will make a way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go back to your seats.
we're, we're going to participate now in a song entitled, Here We Are. This might be new to some of you, but listen to the words. It's very nice. We're ready to go. Lifting our hands to you. Here we are, giving you thanks for all you do. And as we pray and worship your hope. Thank you. Okay. Thank 
you so much. We're glad that you're here this morning. Are you having a spiritual time? I'm so thankful for our caring people. I got a phone call this week from Paul. He said, we're having a, one of our special pastors come in Sabbath. Wondered if we could use the fellowship hall and the kitchen. I said, why, of course. So we're very happy. I asked him, well, could the man speak to our congreg whole congregation? So we're happy this morning that Algol Paul is our speaker. He'll tell a little more about his work, and we'll ask, you going to translate? Okay, you can come up and get ready for that whenever. Yeah. Okay. I follow the order. I'm glad that I can be here again this year. First of all, I want to show you some uh, points about our ministry in Thailand as well as uh, in no man's land. Uh, we, we are working in no man's land where uh, we are not allowed to live there. Until now, we are not allowed to live there yet. That's why it's some of our people are coming to this, this part of the world to you know, find their new home because they, uh, in their own land, they are not allowed to stay there and there's no citizen there. Anyway, this is uh, Burma and uh, we have a Korean people all around this Thai, Thailand is the red one you see there? Yeah. And then, you know, we are working only in this area where we have a thin sheet covering this area. And we call it no man's land because no one allowed to live in that area. There's a martial law area or, you know, if they see you there, they will pay you right away. No, no questions. So we are working there. We send in a lot of uh, uh, young people because we train them in Thailand here. Our ministry, uh, EOF, Education Opportunity Foundation, train them here in Thailand, and we send them in. Uh, I live right here. Uh, we call it Chiang Mai province, and we, dro uh, we drove into this area, and we, to go to this area, you have to walk alone. No, no other uh, transportation is available. So this is another uh, place that they show you where the refugees camps are. You know, uh, from here, Mahangson province until the Kanchanaburi province is covering about two, three provinces that there's uh, thousands and thousands of uh, refugees uh, uh, stationed in the camps along Thai-Myanmar border. And uh, we are also working with this, our people that here in this area, too. Uh, to go uh, last year, not last year, I mean this the year, uh, January of this year, we are visiting uh, this area. And to go to, this is the right on the border. And this is the big boat that we are hiring to go up you know, the Salin River that bordering Thailand and Burma. Uh, yeah, this is on the boat. We call it Buffalo Boat. You know, they carry buffalo on this boat, coming down to sell it in Thailand. You know, people are trading along the border there. But, uh, you know, we are hiring this boat to going up as far as they can go. Then after that, 
we have to, or we have to walk. You know, the only way that you can reach this area is to walk. You know, we Korean people don't wear a trouser like you, uh, but we wear a sarong, they call it here. The sarong become a, pack, uh, a backpack for us whenever we need it. You know. So in the night time, the sarong become a blanket for us when we need it. You know. So we do it in multi-purpose to use the sarong that we use you know, for every purpose. We carry things, you know, we sleep in, we carry our baby with that sarong too. You know. So anyhow, this is what we are using. And when we, uh, you know, when we uh, t reach the place, we just prepare to walk up the hill. So this is our, past, our director in that area, Pastor uh, Nelson. We just ordained him last, last year. And uh, he worked here more than 20, 30 years already. So anyhow, uh, we are traveling uphill. And when we reach the village, there's a bit people there, the, uh, the student, uh, the children here, the, here uh, are, you know, playing around and without any, uh, anything to do there. And this is one of the boys that we are taking uh, pictures. And uh, he's very, uh, very uh, happy to see us. And he come to us and talk to us. And this is a place where I visit uh, in no man's land that I see that in the daytime, because this place we have no school yet. In daytime, they have nothing to do. They sit around and do nothing. And they are, now they are eating some uh, jungle uh, fruits that they can gather in the, uh, in the jungle. Uh, so uh, we just provided school for them because we treasure the Christian education. And because of Christian education, we still have a lot of uh, young people that, you know, coming to church and help the work there and you know going back to the villages we educate them in our school and we bring them to thailand and train them and send them back to the to to their village you know because these people they don't they they, they don't want to come to stay in the uh, refugee camps some like to uh, want uh, come to stay in uh, stay in refugee camps but many of them stay in their own land and they are escaping from uh, for uh, the government troops that are coming into the village and burn the village uh, 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 one, one after another. You know, the, every year, there's a, you know, the government troops are coming into the village and you know, you know, shoot, kill, and burn villages. So uh, we just providing these places with schools and churches and, you know, uh, workers that working among them. This is one of the village that the you know the village uh, provide bail uh, you know tap fruits uh, buildings. This is the school that we have, and this is a student. This is only we all we have about over one hundred and thirty thirty student in this school. But uh, this is only this boarding student that I'm, I'm taking, the picture of boarding, boarding student. You know, these children are many, uh, m coming from many, many places because they are living far. They have no school in that area. So they're coming here and we uh, bail a house for them and they, they come and stay here with us and we just feed them. And, uh, you know, the, pro uh, the uh, you might ask where we get all the funding. The Lord is so good, He sent us, you know, uh, a little at a time. But uh, one of the uh, projects that we are doing with, uh, to feed this, school, uh, this student is, you know, you see the, uh, uh, the plastic bottle, a water bottle, and, you know, the uh, Pepsi Cola can and all those canning that they throw on the roadside. My wife is the one that collecting all those things with other uh, young people, and we s we sold them in the market, and we bring food to these people. And God is so good, you know. We're getting it, you know, not a lot, but you know, just enough to feed them, you know. So, uh, you know, these children are there, and they when when I visit them, they sing for us, and you know, they 
they show that they, they, uh, they, they are happy because of uh, we, we help them with their education. So they are so happy to be with us there. And this is another group in Normanston, deep inside. You know, this, group, uh, this group is only the other side of the border. But this group is you have to walk in for about two, three days to reach this place. And the only place that, uh, the only uh, transportation is walking on your shoe. You know. So uh, anyhow, uh, you know, last year when I was in uh, Minnesota, I talked to one of the Amish, Amish group. I told them that in our area, we cannot ride on a horse like you. you have, uh, we are, you know, the only, th the only thing, uh, the only th uh, vehicle that we can ride is on elephant bag. And elephant bag, riding on elephant bag is take a longer time. So people don't, uh, don't ride on elephant bag that much. They walk, you know, prefer to walk. You know, so this area is where we can walk uh, about two days, you know, to reach this place. This is a small school that we provide for them. And our teachers, we have two teachers there, you know, and the family of them. And then they, this is a small school because this is small because, you know, when you, you are chased out of your village, your village are burned down, you have to, you know, you have to run away and these people are running in one spot and we s provide a, a, a school for them in this spot. And another group here, we also provide a school for them. Uh, they build a school for us, but we provide teachers for them. Another, and also this is another one that we are, you know, providing uh, Ed education, Christian education for them. This, uh, we have about 22 schools. Last few, few months ago, I understand that you receive uh, DVDs from uh, ASAP. And that is the high school that we have in the camp that ASAP take over from us. So we have, we have a, a lighter, a lighter uh, load uh, to take care of that school, but we still have about 22 schools that we are uh, providing for these people here in no man's land. Uh, yeah, this is one of the school, and this is another school that we have. This, this uh, school, we have more students because, you know, people running, the, uh, running or uh, uh, escaping from the enemies, and they gather there and more people are in this place and better. So when they have us, uh, they find out that, you know, uh, it is safer for them to be gathered together. There, they, other, other people are coming to this village, uh, this village, and that's why we have a lot of students here. And this is another school that we have, uh, that bigger one. And we also use solar panel for our, uh, our, uh, our Telephone. We have a you know a telephone to uh, to uh, to connect to each other, and these are high schools. One of us. We call it we call it uh, uh, Adventist Frontier you know, uh, School. You now we have over uh, hundreds you know, students in this school. Uh, the student that coming to this this uh, this our, our, our Adventist school are. Most of uh, their background, their families are uh, animist. They worship, idol, uh, they worship spirits. And they, they kill the, their parents, their parents don't, their family don't want them to become Christians. But whenever they decide to become, uh, to baptize, they have a lot of problems. But many of them are threatened to be killed by their family because the family don't want, they, they're against Christianity. But anyway, Many students decided to, to accept the Lord as their, uh, Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And when they go home, you know, they are not allowed to stay home. That's why we provided a uh, boarding school for them here in this place. We call it EOP, Education Opportunity Programs. And they stay with us and until they finish high school and they become one of our teacher in this area. Or they become one of our evangelists to go to a new area. And this place, this year, uh, by God's grace, we we begin, uh, we start, or we we you know can provide uh, about seven 
more schools in this area. And we sent, out, we sent in a dozen of teachers in that area to start a new school. You know, through the school, we can evangelize this area. Many of our pastors there and our teacher, their family until now, they are not become ad, uh, Christians, but they don't against them anymore. Anyway, uh, many of them are a pastor uh, that they, uh, and, they, and their, their parents are staying with them now. now and they find out that Christians, Christianity make the, their, their children to become a good people. Yeah. Anyway, this is one of our high school that we have that uh, you know, we provided workers for no man's land area. And also, uh, this is our sc old school. They, we call it KAFA, Korean Adventist Frontier Academy. And this school uh, was burned down uh, last two years ago. But we bail up a new one in a new location and made our bamboo split. This bamboo split are very nice and cool and very, sprint, uh, you know, very soft. You know, not that hard, but a bit. You know, when you s sleep at night and you uh, you cannot sleep well because if someone walk out, there's like a you know like a spring spring. You know, it is shaking. But anyhow, you know that someone is walking out. Anyway. Uh, we sleep in that because it's nice and cold. It's very good for uh, hot weather, you know. And uh, this is our old school that we bail. Uh, this is we call it emergency emergency school. We bail it after it's burned down. We bail a new one with bamboo, and this lasts for two years. And so we we feel like we need to bail a new one. So last year we built a new one. And you know this is the new one, but still made out of bamboo. You know this area, and then we put on the uh, we put on the uh, signboard. And you know this boy, this is uh, one of the young men from uh, Mon Montana State. Uh, he is an uh, American, and he volunteered there for two years already. Last year I told you that you know he come back to th uh, Thailand, and as soon as he finished his training from Amazing Fact. He ran back to this place again, and he, he visit them again. He he doesn't say tell me that he will go there, but he just you know I can see him there. So anyhow, he loved this place, and he's still there now. And this is one of our director our director for this area, Pastor Nelson. He just on the opening uh, school ceremony, a new school opening a new school ceremony. He just preaching there, you know. Any anyway. He is there, and he's just working hard. Last month, uh, last two months ago on June, yeah, June, uh, he was in Chiang Mai. I asked him to come to Chiang Mai because he has a big, you know, uh, kidney stone that he need to be uh, taken care of by the doctor. So he doesn't want to come, but I said, you know, don't worry about the expenses. The Lord will provide. So he uh, he came. And then he and his wife, his wife also have another problem too. Anyway, now, uh, I leave them some, uh, uh, some help. And then when I, I'm in uh, Florida last, last June, you know, she called me, uh, he called me and he told me that everything take care of and he's back now. You know, I told him to, to rest for a while, but he cannot rest, this man. He always moving. You know, he always moving. He cannot rest. So anyhow... He's one of the best worker that leading the, this area here. And uh, this is our new school. You can see the logo that we have there is the same like you have here. And then, you know, this uh, school is not the same, but quite strong, strong, as strong as you're building here too, I think. You know. Anyway, this is our new school. Uh, we have a uh, uh, thick, uh, zinc roof. Anyway, this is a group of uh, students and teacher and uh, worker that in that area that meeting together. Now, but this, this is not all. This is only a portion of that. And this is our work, working force in this area. We have, a, we have uh, over 200, but this is only a part of that. Uh, this is a student in the school, and we have a big, bigger, stronger uh, building with bamboo wall and bamboo bamboo uh, floor in this uh, in this area, 
and this is one of the camp meeting last year on January, as I told you. We have a, a camp meeting going on there, and this is a, you know, each banner represents different different schools that we have in that area. You know, this banner are in current, the name is written in current, and they are representing their their school that coming to the camp meeting that we have. In the camp meeting that we have, you know, everybody there and they are very happy and this is parade. Now they just walk into the uh, school, uh, school uh, ground, campground, uh, Nila. This is a school that we have, Plalote. Plalote. This is the name that, you know, we call it Plalote School, but the real place Plalote is occupied by the enemy now. We cannot stay there, but the school name is stay with us. So we moved to a new place, but the school name is going with us. But the place, the school is burned down and the place is no more. But we, a new school, we name it Blalote because in a new location. Anyway, uh, this is uh, represented from that place. And you can see these ladies, you know, Emily, she is also from Montana. That, you know, she, she also finished uh, last year when I was here. They are in, uh, you know, amazing fact studying, and as soon as they finish, they go run back to the place again. They fall in love with, with this area, and they, they go back and, you know, be with the, their student again, you know. So anyhow, they are there, and this is a campground, and, you know, you see that all this hammock, in nighttime, we, 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 they, they, they sleep under the tree, and that daytime they go to worship, they go to study by the words of God. And the family, the whole family come, they also sleep under the tree too. Anyway, this is a daytime, it is empty because, you know, they are going to the, the church for, you know, to, to listen to the sermon and to study the words of God. But in nighttime they are here. And the morning, early in the morning, you know, we, 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 they go up out to the place that when they provide food and they eat there. You know, we, over there, we live uh, like a family, you know, when we have time, uh, when we have camp meetings. We have a cook, cook for them, everybody come, and we eat together. You now we worship together, we sleep together for a week, you know. Then after that, we could, could go home. This is, even this is a simple food, not as good as you have. You have a very, very good food here. So good, you know, over good, good. So, so, but anyhow, you know, here is very good, but, you know, we can, we can see a healthy food because veggies are in the jungle, no spray. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, we have beans and, uh, and chili paste and, you know, I think uh, Mexican like chilies and Korean like chilies at the same time, the same things. And, but I don't think the, the, uh, the, uh, the Western people like chili that much. But anyhow... You know, the current people believe that without chili, they cannot climb hill. They cannot go up hill. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and uh, because I don't eat chili much at home, when they come to my house, they ask for chili. I said, Pastor, without chili, we cannot go back home <laughs> because <laughs> we have to go back to the high hill. Anyway, you know, this is the, our custom, our traditional food that we have. If we have chili and rice and salt, we can survive for years, you know. So no, no problem. This. And bamboo shoot, you, you can see bamboo shoot. There's a lot of bamboo shoot in America too, but it's come from Thailand. Anyway, you know, we, if we have a bamboo shoot and chili paste and green vegetables and salt, we can survive for a year. Anyway, this is our camp eating uh, food. We don't have a, an, uh, you know, special food, but we have ordinary, the standard food that we have, and everybody enjoy the food and go to uh, uh, study the words of God. And this is during the camp meeting times. You know, we just under the the uh, this, the uh, the, uh, uh, the roof we meet together as a camp meeting. And you know, in the night time we have all we also have a competition on singing competition, singing competition. And then this is a group of students that singing, you know, singing. Anyway, this is another group of students singing, and then there's the children the singing, and they all enjoy the camp meeting, and they want to have it again. And uh, this year, it, again, we will do it in December, uh, and uh, last part of December, and uh, I'm going uh, to visit them. 
So if you want to join me, walk in about two days and be with our people, you're welcome to come at the end of December. Some shaking their head, but some is knocking their head. You know, anyway, you're welcome to come with us and see what we are doing for these peop uh, people there. You know, uh, this is a, after the camp meeting, we have baptism. And Pastor Nelson is uh, baptizing them. And, you know, this young man, you know, he, his father no, no, uh, no, uh, uh, didn't give him appro approval for bapti uh, to baptize. But I, I understand uh, through Pastor Nelson that he was chased out of home and he is now with us in our dormitory there. Anyway, uh, we have a other uh, young people, uh, other, a lot of other young people that having the same problem with their family too. But we pray that you know, they can uh, keep on believing in Jesus and never give up. Amen. And that, that is in no man's land. And this is in refugees camps, in Mela camp. We have a group of students that we are keeping them. And uh, this student getting a, a better education and they become a teacher for no man's land school. So uh, this is a group of students and their dormitory, their dormitory is here. The girls' dorm, uh, this, this is another group, this day, day students in the camp that we are supporting, you know. And this is a dormitory that we have. This is girls' dormitory, you know. This small herd and uh, provided shelter for, you know, over 50 students in this place. We have upstairs and downstairs. Bamboo house, you can be upstairs and downstairs too, you know. Some people live on the upstairs, some live on the downstairs. And, you know, crowded there, but anyhow, they, they are very happy to be together. You know, I am afraid that they might fight, but they never fight. This, they love each other very well, this, this girl. The girls always fight, so, but they never fight. So I praise the Lord that they can live together peacefully. And this is a new dorm, boys' dorm that we are bailing this year. You know, we are bailing it. It made out of bamboo and a lot of bamboo needed, you know. So this is bamboo and bamboo can be, probably you don't have bamboo here. You have no problem with bamboo here. So because you don't have it. But we have uh, bamboo there. We build a housing with bamboo. And this is a tash roof building that we have. We're building a dormitory, a new dormitory for our boys, you know. This is outside of the camps in the city because of this is more permanent. We build a permanent building for it. This is a dormitory that we have in Chiang Mai, uh, close to our, our academy there, our Chiang Mai Academy there. So uh, we also have, we also have uh, uh, some students here that stay with us. And this is, you now they are, uh, they, they are ready to go to school now. To the, uh, now, we keep them here. We teach them, uh, mu uh, you know, uh, music. Uh, music. We teach them how to uh, read and write, and how we evangelize in this area too. They are ready to go to school, and now they are ready. This is one of the girls that have no uh, father, uh, only a widow, a, widow uh, a mother, and she is coming to. A place, and we uh, sponsor her to go to uh, the academy there. And uh, we have also have a work work program for our kids because we don't believe that they should stay idle. Because you know, if you are free, you you sin. <laughs> so we give them work to do. So they are working here. They grow their own veggies here, and you know they're mixing the compost. You know. And then they are growing things, and they dig the hole to put on the compost soil so that they can grow veggies. And they have to work at least one hour a day and four hour in every holiday, every Sunday that they, they have, you know. And this is a garden, and also tanning grasses. And this meal time, simple meal, not, not very. Uh, uh, not over good, but good enough to survive. And, uh, but we're giving them vegetarian food every day there. 
And my wife is teaching them Bible, you know, in this dormitory. And uh, now we, we have more students now. But the reason why we don't have more students is because of the expense. We cannot meet the uh, a high expense because they are living in the, uh, in, in the t town there. So it is more expensive. But they, 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 they come here, their, their parents help some of that, and we help some of that, some of the expenses too. And in free time, we teach them to, uh, to play violins. And I know some of you here can play violin too. Anyway, if you know how to teach, you just go to us, to a place, and you can be a volunteer here for a year. This is our camp meeting. We call it EOP, EOP camp meeting. Every year, we are uh, holding camp meeting for, uh, you know, for our, our student only, not the whole group, only our student, our, our sponsored student. They are meeting, and we have over 100 of them that, that meeting every year. Uh, this is a building that we, we uh, asked one of the uh, projects there, you know, Swedish, Swedish uh, rich project building. They have, they have, this is the dormitory. We use their dormitory as a camp meeting because uh, it is cooler. In April, you know, when you stay outside, it's very hot over there, just like here. So we just stay under, under the building and w study Bible together there. And this is our students outside the camps, inside the camps, and no man's land, they're meeting together you know, in these places. And this is the water system in the camps you know, that we have. Uh, this is the wise that very good in memorizing uh, uh, Bible texts. You know, in, uh, Proverbs, Pro, uh, in, in uh, Psalm 119, you know, we have about 176 you know, uh, verses there. He memorized them all. And then he got the first prize you know, among the others. 100 over texts that he memorized them all. And, uh, this is a young man, but even the old, old people like you and me, Pastor, we can memorize too. I have a, I have a Pastor Nelson mother. She is about 65, and she memorized the whole, whole uh, and, uh, Psalm 119, the whole chapter. He memorized them all too. He, uh, she, she also get a good price for this you know, uh, too. Anyway, every weekend... Our uh, students and our teacher, I'm sitting here, we are going to the villages close by, and we are conducting branch service school there. And uh, we're doing that every week. And when we have uh, believers that want to, uh, uh, decided to join the church, you know, we cannot meet in this bamboo building anymore. This bamboo building, my wife don't approve it for me to hold meeting here. So he, she said that uh, she, if, she afraid that it might fall, you know, because it's shaky. You know, bamboo is not strong enough. Anyway, we, by faith, we build up this uh, new church building for them. And uh, uh, by the time that I leave Thailand, it's not finished yet. But I hope that it might be finished soon. You know. Anyway, this is the church that we are building for them so they can meet here. And uh, our, our students, we train, we, we train them to sing and tell story so that they can uh, tell people about the love of God too. This is one of the, one of the town that our project, our, our target, that we plan to uh, claim this city back. Because this city, uh, this town is used to be one of the, uh, what do you call, the uh, headquarters for those who work in Laos. This is in our Laos border. And pa uh, Pastor Dick Hall, I don't know, uh, I don't know whether Pastor, you know him or not. Uh, he is retired, but he's still working until now. And uh, he is the one that building a place, uh, uh, a church here in this, and then a clinic here so that he can train people here in this, town and going, uh, send them back to Laos to work in, among the communist people there. But uh, now, so sad to say that the church, uh, our Thailand missions 
sold this place because no more people live there. So I feel like, you no, know, I want to uh, put on project to, to, uh, to start a work here again. This is the, we have two places. One, one place was sold, and this place is still like a jungle. But this is the, the place belong to the church. That I, I decided that, you know, we will build a church here. And we pray for that. And we also, you know, uh, work hard to reclaim this town back to the church, for the church. So this is the area. There's quite a big, big area that we can, uh, if we can start again. And, you know, in Lampang City, uh, we work there. And we put in a pastor and we train a, his wife as a medical missionary. And we can stop this group. And now, you know, this is, you know, uh, this man is uh, Pastor Dan Smith from uh, uh, Garden Grove, California Church. That he support our work here. And he's, he's his, fr his friend, uh, Watts, you know, Elder Watts' son. And then is another friend there that they visit us here. And this is the group of people that we started in this town, we call it Lampang, Lampang City, uh, through medical missionary work. So anyhow, now we rent this place in faith. We don't have budget, but we rent this place in faith, by, uh, in faith. and we, uh, by this time, the time that I taken this picture, we have no signboard yet. Now we have a signboard that, you know, telling us. Anyway, this is our first worker that working. She's from that place, and she's a American missionary that working, you know, for in this place. And her, she, she made up her mind that she will, uh, by the grace of God, he, she can uh, start up a new uh, separate keeper in this town again. You know, this is our books that we print out. Uh, in Korean as well as in Thai, you know. This year, uh, we but we do, we we have only step to Christ. This is our this is our old step to Christ that we have. The step to Christ I bring this time is a new one. Now we don't have a picture here. Anyhow, uh, we decided that we will translate as many uh, spirit prophecy books that we can as we can. So. Now, so far, we finished Great Controversy in Quran already, and we might be printing it soon, you know. Uh, and then we are starting with, you know, last day event, and we believe that by the times uh, I, I go home, we can, you know, we can, uh, you know, proofread it. And so we still have, we plan to have, uh, to, to translate 10 more, you know, spirit prophecy books into Quran. And we need your prayer support so that we can achieve our goal. This is our studio. Uh, this is the studio building we build out in faith. And this studio uh, we provides uh, CDs and DVDs. And we also put it into the uh, web, web, uh, website. If you look into Jesus for Asia, JFA website, you will see uh, the sermon in Koran and in English and in Thai that we are putting on through, through uh, we are providing all the DVDs and all this uh, program in this building. This is my office building here. Anyway, this is a camp meeting. A camp meeting is held every year and we have 500 uh, camper last year. Not last, not this year, April. This last April. And then they are outside of and inside. And our speaker is from Malaysia. He, he is not a pastor, but he is a uh, he's a director of uh, the uh, you know the health center over there in Malaysia, Anan Health Center. There, he's a good friend of mine. And he's a young man. that's teaching Bible in that health center. And this very young, he finished his uh, uh, education from the United States here. When he's very a very good teacher too. You know, this is a group of uh, Chinese fast, uh, pastor, five of them. You know, we have one, two, three, four, uh, five of them, and me and my friends and uh, one of our workers there. They are coming to visit me and we meet together and negotiate together 
so that they can bring their students from China to be trained in our place here in, in Thailand. And we agree to, to help them with that in faith, you know, in faith. And they, they will bring their, past, uh, their, their students in this because they train the, st uh, the worker, uh, their worker there in China. When they train them, many times, you know, the police come and, you know, you know arrest them and things like that, you know. So it is a lot of problem happening over there. So that's why they want to, be tr they want to train their worker there uh, uh, here in, uh, in, our, in Thailand so that they can, they can escape from all those problems with the authority. So uh, we need your prayer support so that we pray that this uh, school will be, you know, uh, the, the goal of have opening school in Thailand will be achieved. And now we are working on, you know, uh, applying with the government so that we can apply for student visa for them. So, so far it's not so good. Anyhow, we hope that the Lord will provide a way for them. The reason why we are doing what we do now is because the Gospel Formation Commission. In Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20, it said that Jesus spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in, on earth. They go, therefore, and teach all nations, baptize them, teach them to observe all things whatsoever have commanded you, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. We know that you know, this is a gospel commission that God, God is, uh, Jesus is giving to us. We need to, uh, realize, uh, we need to realize and know that Jesus said that all power is given unto me. So he will be with us because the power is with him. Because he told us to go. Go and teach the gospel. And again, we know that God wants us to finish the work. And Jesus can come when the work is finished. It means all everybody heard about the good news. You know, the good news. Uh, the good news, the gospel, need to be preached to the world. So uh, we need to know this good news. The gospel. Adventist Church was giving, you know, the Gospel Commission, the heaven-bound message, the three angel message, and the three angel, first angel message, told us that, tell us that we need to, you know, tell the world about the everlasting gospel, and then, you know, everlasting gospel to tell others we need to know this gospel well. You know, so if we don't you know, know, we cannot tell. Because this gospel has to be preached into all the world. You know, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the witness unto all nations. Now, whether they believe or not is the, doesn't matter, but they have to know this. And whether they believe or not is uh, depending on them and the Holy Spirit. Anyway, and we know that God is so good. Uh, he will want, he want every uh, one of us in this world to finish the work, you know, to, to tell the people about the good news that we have. Jesus, when the good, uh, when the good news is you know, preached into all the world, then Jesus can come. You know, the gospel, you know, we, need, we need to know what is the gospel. For the, it is a good news. It is good news because, because you know, it is tell about God become man. And then, you know, God die for us instead of we die for our own sin. And then also the good news is because, you know, Jesus raised from the dead. God raised from the dead. Because if uh, Paul said that in, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, 17, he said that if Jesus not raised from the dead, our hope is in vain. We are... You know, we are just liars, you know. We have no hope. We are staying in our sin, he said. So the good news is because Jesus rise from the dead. That's why Jesus said, <coughs> Those who believe, uh, if everyone believe me, even though they die, they will raise again. So uh, the good news is we can raise again after we die, if we 
die in faith. You know. So here, the Bible has said that that gospel to be preached in all the world, and then Jesus will come. You know, uh, John 14 is a promise that Jesus promised us. You know, before he leave this earth to go back and finish his work. You know, uh, salvation, our plan of salvation, is started when Jesus died on the cross. And Jesus is going back now into heaven to finish up, you know, this, this plan of salvation. So what uh, the super prophet said is, you know, what Jesus began in this earth, he go back and finish it in heaven. He's now in most holy place doing you know, sealing work for us, you, to, for you and me. He's trying uh, to help us so that we, our name will be in the book of life. So that when he comes, we can be with him. So he's, he said that, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many places, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive un you unto myself that where I am there, you will be there. He will come back and take us home. This is his promise. And also he said that in Revelation 22, verse 12, he said that, uh, he said that, you know, behold, I come quickly and my reward is, is with me. Second coming of Jesus is, no, Jesus come to take us home. No, not a, punish, uh, not a punishment for us. No one to be afraid of that. No, I used to be very you know, uh, scared when I heard that Jesus is coming soon when I was young. But now, nowadays, I'm not afraid of anymore because I know that he's coming to take me home. No. So anyway, uh, Jesus said, I come quickly. Then why the coming delay? I have a friend in uh, Australia, in the town called Obost. I visit him, whenever I visit him, he complained about Jesus never come. And he said that Jesus is, uh, what, he's, what he, is he doing on heaven, sitting down and looking to deeper suffering. And he blamed he blame on God. I said, because we don't do our work. I said, you go back and tell your boss. Because I believe and I know that you don't say anything to your boss yet. So I said that you go back and tell your boss about Jesus. And his coming is very near. So many times we complain and Jesus never comes, never comes. And one of my uh, father's uh, friends, oh, he died by, because my father died already. My father always tell him about, you know, Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. That's about 60 years ago. And then he said that, uh, br uh, brother, he said, your father told me, now my grandfather, told me about this and he died now. And now you are coming and tell me. And pretty soon you will die and maybe if I still, I live long enough, your son will come and tell me again. No, he will, he will never come. He don't, he don't believe in Jesus will come soon. Anyway, uh, Jesus promised that he will come soon. The reason why he cannot come is, the Bible says so here. Jesus said, you know, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, who is waiting for who? You know, Jesus is waiting. God is waiting for us. Because if He come now, are we ready? This is a promise. Uh, this is a question that I want to ask every one of us, and I also ask myself too. If He come now, are we ready? You know, because ready means we need to tell others too. We also have to be ready too, you know, because the nation, everyone should hear about the good news before he comes. So, uh, 
God is you know, waiting for us. So the, Peter keeps on saying, in 2 Peter 3, verse 15, says, count that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. You now my son used to told me, uh, t- uh, tell me, he said that, you know, I believe that, you know, Jesus coming will, will be a, a little longer. You know, it takes a little longer time. Because the way I see now is, it is, you know, even though the signs are there, but, you know, the gospel cannot be, you know, spread out so fast, you know, within two or three years' time. That's what he said. And he said, it will take time. It takes a longer time. But he said, don't, don't, you cannot say that, I told him, because God can do a miracle. God may, can make the time short through, you know, when, when the Holy Spirit work, then, you know, I told him that the work will finish just within a blink of your eye, and then it will be finished. Anyway, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Peter one us that, count that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation for us. You know, don't let this chance go you know, away without us saving in the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, the Christ object lesson, page 69, you know, said that Christ is waiting with longing desire for a manifestation of himself in his church. You know, and he, uh, she also continues that when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. So, you know, here is Christ wants us to be ready you know, so that we can reflect his image in the church. Everybody that sees us will know that Jesus, uh, we are Christian. You know, because nowadays, you know, uh, churches are split, fighting, and, uh, and they are going to worldly, and then they do everything they want to do. You know, they're copying the world. They're compromising with the world. You know, we need to know that you know, we are not here to compromise, or we are here to finish the work and go home, because we are not American citizens. We are the Heavenly, heavenly citizen. So our home is in heaven, not here. So you know we need to finish the work and tell others about the, the soon coming of Jesus. Christ is waiting and lo- uh, longing desire, you no, know, longing desire, you no, know, for the manifestation of Himself in the church. And when the character of Christ is fully revealed in His people. He will come to claim them as his own. Uh, it is the privilege of every, it is the privilege of every Christian not only to look for but to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus to make it faster. So this is a privilege. We need, we can make it faster through uh, our 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 effort. We all who profess His name bearing fruit to His glory, how quick. Uh, were, all, were all who profess his name be- bearing fruit to his glory, how quickly the whole world would be sown with the seed of the gospel. Quickly the last great harvest would be reaped, and Christ should come to gather precious grain. When the church reflect the image of Christ in them, then we will be ready for Holy Spirit, the later rain. Then the, ch- the, the harvest will be reaped, and Many, you know, thousands a day will be converted into the church, and Jesus can come. So, you know, Jesus is waiting for the church to be prepared to meet this, uh, this uh, commission. John 15, 8 said, Here is my Father's glorified that ye bear much fruit, so uh, shall ye be my disciple. We are not, are we di- the disciple of Christ. No, this is the question. But my answer for you is, until we bear fruits, we are not disciple. So we need to bear fruits. What fruits do we need to bear? You know, we, need, we know that you know, there's a nine fruit of the Spirit that we need to bear in the church. So the people we see Jesus in the church. You know, people we see Jesus in us. So that they, can, they, want to, they will want to know the truth that we have. 
John 16, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, no, and ye shall receive that you joy may be full. Ask, Jesus said, ask. Jesus told his disciple, and we are also his disciple. He said that you are not asking. Every day we are asking. We are asking on food, health, money, job, and many other things. But are we asking for the Holy Spirit, for the later rain? Because God is waiting for us. He wants to pour out, pour out the later rain you know, for us, but we are not ready to receive it yet. The church is not ready yet. So we need to be ready. You know. God wants us to finish the work. Uh, Galatians 5.22 talk about the fruit of the Spirit. If one, love. You know, two, joy, uh, joy. Three, peace. Four, long-suffering. Five, gentleness. Six, goodness. Seven, faith. Eight, meekness. And nine, temperance. This is the fruit of the Spirit that have to be with us. You know. So to get these fruits, we need to ask. We have to ask for this. You know, as Spirit Prophet said that, ask for it, pray for it, talk about it, and do it. You know. So this is what we need. We need to ask for that, pray for that, and talk about it. And then we will receive it. If we want it, we will get it. Because God is ready. Jesus is ready to give us this, uh, this, this. So we all who profess his name bearing fruit to his glory, how quickly the whole world would be sown with the seed of gospel. So, you know, we need to be ready. Quick, quickly the last great harvest would be reaped and Christ would come together the precious grain. So Jesus is waiting for us. We are not waiting for him. So we can hasten this work through, you know, ask for the Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew 5, 16, that let your light be shine. You know, so that we can let our light shine, we need these nine fruits. Because, you know, when people see us, they should know that we are uh, ch uh, children of God. Let your light be shine before men that they may see you good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want to tell you about my experience when I came back from uh, Malaysia with my wife. I saw a group of young people. Uh, they are coming back from uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur to Chiang Mai. The same, they are, we are boarding the same uh, plane. You know. And I find out that they are not dressing like other I know, people that, that I saw in, in their rooms. They dress very nicely. They have a scarf on the head, and they have a you know, long sleeve or short leaves, not, not so short. And all they have a long uh, uh, you know, skirt. And they, the way they talk is very polite and you know, very good young people. Man, young men and young, uh, young women, they talk very politely. And my wife, you know, told me, you see, this should be a missionary to Thailand. You know, yes, they are a missionary to Thailand because as soon as we reach Chiang Mai, there's a group of missionaries from the Sandy Church that come and come to pick them up on the, on the pickup truck and take them to the, to the mission field so they can work there. So these young people show that they are you know, the follower of Jesus through their dress. And we can show through our, the way we are talking, the way we dress, the way we eat, the way we you know, uh, do and give glory to God. Jesus asked us in the, the first angel message to give glory to him. You know. So by you know, our daily activities, by what we eat, what we drink, what we listen, what we look, we can give glory to Him. And every uh, people we know Je can know Jesus through us. Matthew 5, verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if thou the salt have lost its savour, uh, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be uh, trodden under foot of man. 
ye are the light of the world. And the city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. We know that we have to be uh, salty like salt. Now, I have seen a salt that lost their savior and people step on that. I don't believe that there's a uh, salt that not salty in, before I see this. I saw this in south of uh, Thailand when I saw a group of people, you know, putting on the, uh, 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 you know, carrying the salt bag onto the truck. And I saw them walk on the salt pile and very dirty that pile. I told them that after you finish this load, you might dig out from this and put it in the bag and, you know, put it into the truck again. They said that no. This salt is useless because this rain comes for two, three times and then no more salty, no more salty. That's why Jesus said that if the salt loss is savior, it cannot be used. So we need to be salted like salt. You know, the salt for the Korean people, we need a lot of salt. From the old days when there's no refrigerator, they need salt. And that's why they need salt. And in the Western world, they're also looking for spices so to make you know, their meat you know, to taste nice or to smell nice. But in, in, for the Korean people, you know, the fish that we salted that, the more it stinks, the better it is taste. <laughs> anyway, this is we call Korean cheese. You know, your cheese in, in America here, the Korean people don't like your cheese. They said, stink. No. Very stink. The cheese is a stink for them. But for the for the uh, for the uh, their their fish paste, they said, mmm, smell nice. They said. But for the for the white people, oh, they cannot stand that. You see, they cannot stand that. I saw I saw many of the my white friend from Australia. When they when they get the the uh, the uh, fish paste, you know smell, when, they, when you boil it, you know, the smell is going out all over the place. And the, 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 my friend don't like it. They cannot stand it. You know, they cannot stand it, but we love it. You know. Anyway, we love it because of the salt. You know, without salt, this fish cannot stay in a pile. It will become melted, become uh, watery, and then only a bone left. But with salt, the meat is still there, even though it smells bad. The meat is still there and tastes good. You know. Anyway, because of the salt helping you know, this fish, you know, it has come so far from Thailand all the way to the United States for the cramp people here. Because of the salt, you can see fish paste coming from Thailand to, to America. Without salt, you cannot see that. So, just like salt helping the meat you know, to, to, to hold on together and not to rotten all, you know, we Christians also, God, Jesus said, you are the salt. We have to be salt like salt. We have, you know, in the old times, when they, in this uh, plan of salvation in the century, they make uh, bread with salt too. And the salt is peacemaker between God and the sinner. So we are the peacemaker between the sinner and the world and you know, God. So we need to help. But most of them, most of the time, we are not, we have no, salt, uh, no salty taste. We are not salted. We are not, we lost our savor. So many times when we go out, we, we want to copy people, and we are like them. You know, we, I have seen a lot of, young, of our young people, because they are not that salt enough, they go out and we lost them. So we need to ground our young people and our church members in the gospel, in the, to know the gospel well, the everlasting gospel well, so that they will go out and help others to know this gospel. Amen. You know, so... Uh, we need to spend more time you know, in a camp meeting instead of you know, uh, entertaining our young people. We need to 
you know, we need to educate them and ground them on the words of God. That's why I always, when I come here, uh, I go to the Kram people and I, I told them, if you give me time to study Bible together, I'll come back every year. Otherwise, you know, I won't come back again. You know, because you know, the time is short. And we need to finish the work. And I always pray that I'll be among, among those who finish the work. I know that if we don't do it, never mind. You, you can sleep where you are. But the Lord, we have a group of people, young people, old people, that we finish the work. And I always pray that I'll be among one of them. You know, I pray that I'll be one of them too. Because there will be a group of people that will finish the work. Because Jesus said he will come soon. He will come. He will come anyhow. Even though he's waiting, he will come. You know, the time will come. When his time comes, he will come. That's why Pastor Taylor is still working until now. I asked him this morning. I heard that grand people said that you are going to retire. He said, I retire many times. Yes, he retired many times. That's why I'm also, after my retirement, I retire at 60. I stay work on six years. And I, I told people that I will work five, four more years than 70 I die. Because the Bible said that 70 is a good age, right? After that, it's a problem. Anyway, my friend in, one, uh, in California told me that I'm 72 already and I still enjoy my life. So you should be more than that. So I just said, okay, maybe, you know. So I want to sleep, stay longer so I can work with my people and, you know, I can see you again next year. Anyway, uh, you know, the time is short. So we need to, you know, we need to pray that God will use us. So we need, we'll be among those who finish the work. In Colossians 4, 6, that the let, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, the Kren translation is said that always, you know, salty like salt. You know, we need to be always salty like salt so that we can help others and tell them about what we believe. You know. Anyway, here's a text that I want to read for you. Psalm 102, verse 16 said that when the Lord shall bail up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. And it means that when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. So, you know, let's pray so that the character of Christ will be revealed in us. When people see us, we know that we are children of God. And they will want to accept this message that we have and then they'll be ready and we'll be ready and we can go home. May God bless each of you and I always pray that I can be with you next year in heaven.
we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. Help us so that we pray for that, talk about that, and practice doing that, so that we will receive Holy Spirit so that we can be among those who, who finish the work. The work is delayed because of us. So, O oh Lord, always remind us so that we will uh, be the one that working for the soon coming of Jesus. Help us so that we can hasten the coming of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for listening and answering and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> 